What is up, my people? I've uh, got a bit of a theory to share with you again today. Um, making a few videos to make up for my uh, absence over the weekend. Anyway, I've been starting to look into the possibility of creating a course for Chessable on the Freddy Krueger repertoire. And I've done a little bit of poking around. Um, really, the, I mean, the whole point of the, of the Kruger repertoire is, is to try and throw in the move F5 when we can to contest the center. It's a bit like a backward Sicilian, um, in a, in a way. Um, and I've, I was looking at all the different main responses, uh, particularly after E4, E5. Um, and I, I, I've revisited the King's Gambit because normally um, in the King's Gambit, um, well, recently I've been playing this move C6, which was recommended by Danya, and, and it, it's a good line. But it's not really Kruger, is it? And so I asked myself, well, wouldn't it be great if we could, for example, throw in the move F5 here? And I thought, well, is it a move? Is it real? So here, actually, I mean, the machine says that you should take the pawn, okay? Um, second best move is, is d5. Both of these are will be quite familiar to your King's Gambit player. Most common move is e takes d4. Second most common is... Um, sorry, e takes f4. Second most common is knight c6, and then you've got d6. Then you've got d5, and bishop c5, and the move f6, interestingly. And then you can carry on. You can have queen h4 check. You've got knight f6. You've got, and then it brings us on to this move, pawn to f5. And the, the, the engine disapproves immediately. But the point, the whole point of the Kruger repertoire is that we want to get the player with the white pieces out of his comfort zone and into our territory. And that's the point now. After there's, so there's basically only one move here for for White to play. I mean, knight, knight c3 is playable and d3 is playable, um, but the best move by a long way is e takes f5. So we've kind of turned the tables really on the king's gambit here, all right? And it says White is plus 0.9, which is all right, you know. Um, but let's see how it goes. So what I've done is there are basically four main moves that. Add up to what 90%, so what's that? 60, 75, 83%, these four main moves of what white will play from this position. And the most successful by a long way is e takes f5. Now I've got my settings set to absolutely everything. Let's throw in blitz as well. Okay, so um, including blitz, e takes f5, the most popular move, 41%, win 62% for white, but wait, because it depends if you know what to do. So I'm going to go through these first these four main responses from the player with the white pieces, and we'll see what happens. Okay, so the the first move, e f. This is the best move, and the most common move here played by Black is to recapture on there. But that is very very bad indeed, and White goes on to win 65% of the time. In fact, White does well in the top five responses here. You've got e4 um, pushing on. You've got knight f6. You've got uh, queen h4 check, which is premature. And you've got the move d6, right? Now, all in all of these, white's winning about 60% of games. But then we get back, we get down to the sixth most common move, and suddenly it's better for black. I mean, the engine still has white at plus 0.9, but the move here is queen e7. Now, let's just go back to the start. So how many times do, does White get to play the King's Gambit? 50 million games, okay, for sake of argument. 50 million games. They will only see this a third of a million, right? 320,000 games. So that's a lot less. That's, that's less than 1%. Okay, so 50 million games. Let's say they take, they see this 7,000, okay? 7,000. That means that most King's Gambit players have never seen this and will never see it in their entire playing career. Okay, so let us push on with all of White's most common moves. 
and see what happens. In this, this is the main line. Okay, so from here, the most common move is queen h5 check. And this isn't great. You can't play g6 because then pawn takes, pawn takes, and you lose your rook. Okay, so you have to move your king. All right. But suddenly, although the computer still gives white a slight edge, black is winning in every line almost, at least from the top four. Okay, so what does white play here? Uh, it says it says the best move in terms of the database is knight c3, where white wins half the games. Everything else, white, white is just a bit worse. Uh, the computer says f takes c5 is the best move, and that is the most common move. Right after which, obviously, we take with the queen with check. Right, this is all white's most common ideas. Okay, they block with the bishop, and now obviously you can develop your knight with tempo. And there's a few moves here. Queen f3 is the most common. We now push d5. No, we don't. We, well, you can push d5. Uh, knight c6 is the uh, tends to do better. So d5 d5 works well at 57%, but it depends also, you might need to tweak this for your particular rating range. So I'm suggesting just develop with knight c6. Their most common move now is c3. Maybe they're preparing d4. Okay, so you can push d5. They'll hit you with d4 anyway. And now because we've moved our d-pawn, we have our bishop looking at this, you can get the feel for this, these common uh, Kruger ideas now, with moving the d-pawn to recover your lost pawn. You can just collect with a queen, probably trade queens. And then after they, they really have to play knight f3, but black is slightly better in every line. In, in fact, black is even slightly better according to the, the database right now. Okay, they bring out their knight, you just develop your bishop, and we play on from here. Black is just slightly better. After rook e8, we have a slight edge. Okay, so that's the main line. Let's look at the uh, the second most common move from white, which is actually a blunder. Okay, so here we go. This is called the Pantaldakis counter gambit. There's a mouthful. All right, now, um, so we've seen the, the best move here is EF. Guess what the, in fact, this is now the third most common move since I've changed the things, but um, F takes E5 is played one in six games, okay? Now, anybody who's faced the King's Gambit, every King's Gambit player should know you never take. You never take on E5. Why? Because the Queen comes out. Okay, g3, queen takes e4, check, forking king and rook, right? And it's pretty much already game over. So that's the second slash third most common move that you will see. Let's carry on, just a couple more. Knight f3. Looks perfectly sensible, okay? But in fact, we already have a slight edge. Why? Because obviously we take the pawn. Any time in the Kruger repertoire we can hit that knight, gain the tempo, like in the Vienna Gambit, that's what we want to do. They take here, we develop our knight, and we are in kind of familiar Kruger territory here, right? We've got the, the F pawns out the way, we've got a knight in. Any time the knight comes in, you normally play knight F6 if you can. They bring out their bishop, and you just push D5, right? They drop back, you bring your bishop out. So either of these squares is, is absolutely fine. Um, they'll usually play d4, you capture on passant, and we are slightly better. It's minus 0.5 in black's favour. We are still going to be able to castle. You'll probably push c6 at some point. You'll get your bishop out. All good. Happy days there. Let's have another look, uh, final look at knight c3. Okay, so this is like the fourth most common move, knight c3. Uh, again, here we capture, but we capture... Um, E takes F here, it's a free pawn after all. Most common move, they'll bring out their knight, we capture again, they will take with their knight. D5 now, again comes with tempo, black is already slightly better. Okay, and you develop your knight and um, black actually wins 57% of games from here at a higher level. If you include blitz and then all the lower levels, then it's uh, still 50% for black. So I think this is quite interesting, don't you? And it fits in much more nicely with the whole Freddy Krueger idea. And it's it's great that we, we can start to recycle some of those patterns um, 
and some of those attacking ideas as well that we've seen in other openings. So this is my method for getting an unfair advantage against my opposition. So let me know, does anybody play the Pantel Dakis counter gambit? Or if you're a King's Gambit player, have you seen it? Do you rate it? Um, how do you feel when you see it on the board? So let me know in the comments. Um, thought you'd just be interested in seeing this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.